Thank you, Mr. Williams. Thank you, Your Honor. 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 Mr. Williams. Thank you, Your Honor.
Can you tell the jury about those trainings? Sure. I've been a firearms instructor at the FBI Academy in Quantico, Virginia. <coughs> doing firearms training through the FBI Academy in Quantico, Virginia. And then I've done various other trainings at smaller police departments and some personal training for gunsmiths in general. Are you a member of any professional organizations? I am. And what are those? Um, I'm a member of the American Pistol Smiths Guild. I'm a member of the American Handgunner Club 100. Um, I was Pistol Smith of the Year in 2006. I am um, NRA member, State Rifle Association, and several other affiliations. Now, as part of your duties, either as a pistol smith or in a research and development or director of the custom shop, uh, do you test firearms for operability? I do. Um, do you test firearms for, let me ask this, are people able to send firearms that they purchase from Springfield Armory back to Springfield? They are. And, and when that happens, are you able to test for repairs or anything that can be wrong with the gun? We do. We also upgrade uh, firearms to a higher level. And but we do repair and, and diagnostics and whatever the customer may choose. And about how many firearms have you tested, uh, tested in your career? Hundreds of thousands. And what about how many rounds do you think you've shot off? Oh, I've shot in excess of a million, probably between two to five. <clears throat> and does part of your operability test include the force used to pull a particular trigger on a gun? It does. And does part of your operability test include uh, force used to deactivate any trigger safeties or safeties on the gun? It does. And would that include grip safety? Yes. Are you familiar with the Springfield XDM 4.59 millimeter pistol? I am. And have you ever testified in a court of record such as the Superior Court or the Court of Common Pleas? I have. And how many times would you say you've testified? A handful. Four or five to six. I'm not. I'm really not sure. Over the years, there's been several. And what sort of cases do you testify? I testify uh, mainly in court. I testify in cases similar to this, criminal cases. And I've heard like civil cases as well? Some civil cases, but uh, we don't have many. Um, and when you've testified in the court record, you qualified as an expert in these courts? Um, Your Honor, related to witnesses, qualifications, and experience, I've asked that. He did that as an expert witness in the field of handgun design and operability for Springfield firearms. And what here? What's the proper? Handgun and design and operability for Springfield, specifically Springfield firearms. No, Judge, um, if you could just do the charge, though. Of course. So. The court finds uh, that Mr. Williams is uh, qualified as an expert based on his education, training, and experience in handgun design and operability for Springfield firearms. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this uh, witness is being offered as an expert witness. As with uh, any witness, you are um, able to accept this testimony or reject this testimony based on your uh, review of, uh, of, his, uh, of his testimony in court. Um, with that, Mr. Lackey, may continue to your uh, Thank you. Thank you. Just for identification, just in case you need Mr. Williams, I'm going to show you Mr. Marcus S113. Just keep up here, and if we need to get into it, you can go. Can you testify that, uh, just previously you testified on for operability? Yes. Now, can you please explain to the jury how you would testify, or how you would test the Springfield handgun, specifically the model XDM 4.5 9mm pistol? Well, it would depend on the circumstances that we received, you know, what the, what the reason the customer returned the gun to us for. Uh, in this situation, uh, we were uh, reached, <laughs> excuse me, the Burlington, uh, Prosecutor's office reached out to us with some technical questions about this particular firearm. Uh, we volunteered to inspect the pistol. You guys 
accepted that, uh, sent the pistol to us, and then we did a thorough inspection of the gun, which included visual inspection, technical inspection, and test firing of the gun with, with a couple of various types of ammunition. And what does the visual inspection entail? Well, with the visual inspection, when we receive a pistol, we have no idea what the condition of the gun is. So as soon as we take it out of the box, we inspect the gun, clear the gun, make sure it's safe, unloaded, and then we'll field strip the pistol, look for any abnormalities that might be apparent, clean the gun with, with uh, just compressed air if we need to. We don't want to change anything in the gun, but if it's, you know, we have to make sure we can see what we're, what we're looking for and inspect all of the components that may have anything to do with the complaint that the customer may have had with the gun. And what about the technical inspection design? The technical inspection, we get a little bit deeper. We look at all the components under a, a Celestron a <coughs> digital microscope or a hand magnifying system. We do a hands-on inspection of the tension of the components make sure that all the components have the proper tension and feel. And then we do a technical further inspection with more specific diagnostic <coughs> to make sure that, that everything that we're looking at functions properly and as intended. And do you do a functional inspection? We do. And what is that? The functional inspection, we, <laughs> we refer to the term as dry firing. We take the input, we take the handgun with no ammunition, hand cycle it, this is an auto, this is auto loading pistol, which has a reciprocating slide on it. We operate the slide, make sure that the grip safety works as it should. Has a trigger safety, we make the trigger safety works as it should. We make sure that the striker system functions as it should, and we verify all those functions. And then you also have a test fire. Device. And then we do a test fire with live ammunition, which basically duplicates everything that we've done in the uh, dry fire procedure. Now, are these, uh, are tests such as this performed on firearms before they're sold? <coughs> they are. And this, before a firearm gets sold, is it, it goes through various manufacturing tests? It does. Yeah. Now, if there was a gun that went, that was during that process, the manufacturing process, the test process, if it wasn't working properly, would it be sold? No. And what would happen if it wasn't working properly? Well, there's, there's stages of assembly on these guns, and through every stage of assembly, there's Gauging is done, uh, measurements, testing, if uh, spring tension, if anything in that process is out of specification, uh, we bring it back into specification and it moves forward along the assembly process and this goes on until final assembly goes through another visual dry fire inspection and then they're extensively test fired. Prior to being sold. Prior to being sold. I'm not sure it was good to have it since that's 46. First, let me ask you if you that box. I do. And what is that? This is a Springfield XD shipping container. And if you wouldn't mind, just open it up and take a look on the inside. I do. And what is that? This is a Springfield XDM 9mm 4-point inch pistol. And have you had an opportunity to view that Springfield I have. firearm? And what are the circumstances that you receive that firearm? I'm sorry, could you say what are, the, what are the circumstances that you receive that firearm? After the conversation I had with the prosecutor's office, uh, they returned the pistol to us. I believe it came in around August the 7th. The gun was hand delivered to me. What year, Judge? What year was that, sir? That one you said August 7th, what year? Uh, bear with me for one moment. Let me ask you. 2018. Did you, did you write a report after you did all your. I did. And you mm -hmm. got memorialized? Yes. And you're looking at 
that's uh, S113. <clears throat> is that a copy of your report? It is. So if you need to refresh your recollection at all during any of these questions and you need to refer to that report, uh, you may do so. I'll read from the report, but you can refer to your recollection. So the question, uh, what year? You said August 2018. 2018? Yes. That's what it says in your report? Yes. And that's the, that's the firearm that you did <coughs> test on, correct? It is. And you know that by looking at the serial number? I do. Now, before we get into the, uh, the test that you performed on that firearm, if you please uh, step down with the firearm and explain to the jury the functionality of that firearm and how it works. I certainly will. semi-auto pistol, meaning, or an auto-loading pistol, meaning that uh, it self-loads the cartridge. Once you charge it, it self-loads the cartridge, and every time you from the magazine, which is this apparatus here, you load the cartridges into the magazine, this one holds 19 rounds, you insert the magazine into the gun, it loads the cartridge, and you pull the trigger and fire it, it ejects the same cartridge. I'm not sure if the jurors on this end can see them. I'm going too fast to stop me. Let me back up just a little bit and show you the, um, actually the main components of the gun. Uh, That's right. Okay. There's three main sub assemblies to the, to the pistol there's a magazine, which holds the ammunition, there's the slide assembly. It's called a slide because, as in function of the gun, it, slides back and forth. The slide assembly contains the barrel, the slide, various other parts, and the striker mechanism, which is also known as a firing pin. Then the frame assembly holds the grip frame. It also holds it also holds the grip safety, which is this lever here in the rear. You can see I'm manipulating it with my finger. Trigger. And then in the center of the trigger is a trigger safety lever. So if you would insert a live mag a magazine with ammunition into the gun, manipulate the side, which loads the which loads the cartridge, and then fire the gun. The grip, well, I mentioned the grip safety earlier. When you grasp the pistol, it automatically disengages the grip safety. When you're ready to fire, you touch the trigger, which disengages the trigger safety. And then you press the trigger all the way to the rear until it fires. If it fires, it will check the cartridge load another one, release the trigger, and it fires again until all the ammunition is, is consumed. <coughs> Now, for this kind of fire, you have to press the grip safety, and you have to press the trigger safety, and you have to depress the trigger completely to the normal firing position or it won't fire. If you don't do any of those, if you miss one of those operations, you cannot fire. Excuse me. And that's the basic function of a semi auto pistol. Hey, can you just explain how the grip safety works? In sure. The, one the grip safety in the rear. The frame also contains the fire, half of the firing mechanism. <laughs> There's a device called a sear in the trigger housing. It basically, triggers a, the trigger is attached to the transfer bar to the sear. The grip safety physically blocks the sear. So if, you, if this is not depressed, it is impossible to pull the trigger to fire the gun. It's mechanically stopped. Again, to depress the trigger, you have to press the, grip, the trigger safety. If you press the side of the trigger, it cannot fire. So three things have to happen that you can see for this to fire. Whenever you grasp the gun in a normal firing position, 
The nerve safety is automatically depressed. You don't have to consciously be aware of that. Same with the trigger safety. You touch the trigger safety, it deactivates after a few ounces of pressure, typically four to five. And then you can then it releases the trigger or you can pull it to the to the firing position. And there's a considerable amount of travel that the trigger moves before it fires. And it's under a certain weight. This this will is uh, six point eight pounds to press the trigger to the fire. <laughs> so just going back to the inspection we talked about a moment ago. Uh, did you perform a visual inspection? I did. On the firearm? I did. did that, and what did that entail? Feel stripping a pistol. <laughs> when you feel strip the pistol, you can see all of the action components. You don't have to remove them. They're easily visible. They're easily manipulated. You can feel the tension on them. You can, you can immediately see if anything's out of place, if anything's broken, if anything's out of the ordinary, if the part's been modified or, or uh, is damaged or chipped or defective in any way. Did you see any modifications on this stuff? No. Uh, did you see anything using your words that was out of the norm or no. not normal? No. So, and then did you complete the technical inspection on that? I did. And again, on this particular pistol, on this particular what, did that, what did that uh, entail? We checked the tension that it takes to depress the grip safety. We found that to be in the normal range. I believe it was five ounces. Actually, what I'm referring to in my notes is eight ounces. The, the, the minimum is what you would be concerned about. You always want the grip safety exposed. If the gun were pointed down, there has to be enough spring tension to push the grip safety in the normal safe position. But it was within range. We also <coughs> we also tested the force required to deactivate trigger safety. The same thing. It has to have the minimum tension is uh, has to have enough to spring it to the upward safe position, and then we tested the weight of the complete trigger cycle. What was the trigger safety uh, pressure? Uh, Five point four ounces. And then what about? Uh, can you talk about the pounds of pressure for for the trigger and how you figure that out? Yeah, for the trigger pull, six point eight four pounds. And we have some sophisticated digital scales that measure in the uh, hundredth of an ounce. That will we round off to the tenth of an ounce because it's it's really pointless to go any further than that. But uh, we use force gauges to measure all of those tensions. Now, can you just explain to the jury? I even I don't really understand necessarily. The, what do you mean by six pounds to pull that trigger? I mean, if you can explain that to the jury. Oh, sure. If you can imagine uh, a jug of bottled water, a gallon jug of bottled water, that weighs eight pounds. So a pound and a half less than what a gallon jug of bottled water weighs if you try to lift it with your index finger. That might give you an idea of what, uh, what it takes to press the trigger on this particular gun. So your finger would essentially need to pull 6.8 pounds to engage that trigger. Correct. That. To pull the trigger back to the point where it was fired to 6.8 pounds. <clears throat> now, is it possible to fire that gun with only one of those safeties it engaged? It is not. So all three of them need to all be All three of them have to be engaged. If any of the three are not engaged, the gun will not fire. Now, the weights and pressures that you put in your report for this firearm, are they all within normal operating parameters? They are. So you didn't see anything unusual about that? Absolutely not. Now, uh, in your experience with Springfield firearms and handguns, um, is 6.8 a lot, a little? What, what, where would you put that in the range? 6.8 is, is 
right in the center of the range, maybe a little bit on the heavier side, I believe by the time this gun was manufactured, trigger pull range was 5.8 to 7.5 pounds. Excuse me, 5.5 to 7.5 pounds. Now, how about the functional inspection? Did you uh, form out this pistol? I did. Function, the functional inspection, we assembled the gun <clears throat> just like this. No ammunition. We manipulate the slide, make sure everything felt proper. We actually physically test the function of the grip safety to make sure that it would not fire when the grip safety wasn't depressed. We would then depress the grip safety, make sure the pistol would fire, charge it again. <coughs> we depress the grip safety because we know it works. We depress the grip safety and attempt to press the trigger without depressing the trigger safety. It won't fire. We then depress the trigger safety and then pull the trigger with its furthest travel until it fires. And did it, was it only <coughs> when you it did. That? it did and does now. Did you ever conduct a test fire in that way? I did. <coughs> <coughs> well, every time we inspect the gun, it's the, the, the proof of the pudding, per se, is to, uh, once we're comfortable with the guns in normal operating condition, uh, then we test fire with live ammunition. We've got a test fire facility in our in our, our test fire facility in our plant where we test fire all of our guns. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm suffering a bronchial infection. I'm trying to get over so my voice is kind of getting weak. But uh, I thought I function tested this gun with two different types of ammunition, ten rounds each. Uh, one of them was just a generic. 9 millimeter ammunition. The other one was the ammunition that I was uh, told that was in the gun at the time of the incident. I fired that ammunition as well with no incident. Everything worked as normal. And you test fired the ammunition, you said? I'm sorry? You test fired ammunition out of that? Pistol? Yes. Two cannons. Now, after you completed the inspection, did you come to any conclusion regarding this pistol? I did. I come to the conclusion that this pistol is in normal and safe operating condition and otherwise could be back in service. I'm going to show you what you want this S47 in evidence. <coughs> and can you take a look at that? Yes, it is a uh, nine millimeter spent cartridge case. Spent meaning it had been fired in this gun and ejected. And did you see anything abnormal about that? Not at all. And how do you know that it was that it was fired? Can you talk about <coughs> that? Yes, I'm sorry. Question for me. Is it either already asked a question or you can read it back? But by looking at that. Shell piece, can you tell it had been fired? You can. I mean, the, so, the obvious I, I, I thing. I an objection. I'm not sure if he's being proffered. He had said he, the, the casing was fired from the gun. Did he do that test to make that determination? Is that something he's been told? I'm, he wasn't being yeah. proffered in a comparison expert. I just want to make that clear. Sure. Thank you. If you just lay a little bit more foundation with respect to this witness. That, was that sent to you? <coughs> yes. The this cartridge case was provided with the pistol. And not this pistol particularly, but can you tell by looking at that casing that it was fired? I can. And how can you tell? Well, first, the most obvious thing is there's no bullet. I mean, a cartridge is made of four components. There's the bullet or the projectile. There's the propellant. There's the primer, which is this, I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's very If you have to get up to show the jury. Sure. So the complete piece of ammunition is called a cartridge. We refer to engineers as bullets. But the bullet is the actual projectile that is fired from the cartridge. So there's the cartridge case, there's a bullet, there's the propellant inside, and in the rear, this little silver piece there is the primer. And that's what ignites the propellant charge. When the striker or the firing pin, after you release it with the trigger, moves forward, it hits the primer. Primer ignites, ignites the powder charge and the bullets expand. So right off the bat, there's no bullet in here. You can see that it's been fired. 
Also the primer has an indention in the back. In the center of it, it's a little round spherical indention. And that tells me that the primer was struck by the striker, which ignited the powder and expelled the bullet. This has a normal primer. The primer inventions can vary if things don't go properly. This has a normal primer invention in it, just exactly like the ammunition that I test fired had. So this uh, lets us know that there wasn't any anomaly when the gun was fired as far as the, the, the striker struck it as it normally would, left the normal invention into the primer. You are stating some further questions. Just hold your witness. Good morning. Good morning. So, um, you are the head gunsmith there? You could say that, yeah. And you've been designing Springfield for a significant period of time. Right? Yes, ma'am. In addition to designing Springfield, um, you told us that you have patents in certain aspects of the firearm. Yes, ma'am. Including patents in safety, right? And uh, trigger uh, trigger lock safeties, yes, ma'am. What is the purpose of a safety? Well, the purpose of the safety is uh, to prevent an unintended discharge from uh, any firearm. And what is an unintended discharge, though? That's any time the pistol fires when you don't intend for it to fire. And that happens, right? It does happen. It happens with trained individuals as well as untrained individuals, correct? It does. It can. It certainly does. Um, in fact, it doesn't happen. happen with everyone, but it happens. Right. Um, and, and in fact, uh, I noticed when you were showing the jury the firearm, you were pointing it in a different direction than a human being. Is that correct? Correct. What was the purpose of that? Well, you never, ever, ever point a firearm at any object that you don't want to destroy, whether you think the gun's loaded or not, ever. Because you don't want to have an accidental or unintended discharge, correct? Correct. All right. um, and would you agree with me, sir, that um, there <clears throat> can be three separate and distinct reasons why a gun can accidentally discharge? I need, would need to know what those three were that you're referring to. Sure. Um, the gun could be faulty, right? It could be. Uh, the ammunition could be faulty, right? It could be. Or the handler could make a mistake. Is that right? Correct. And as far as your function here today, you were telling us that you believe the firearm, when you fired it um, in August of 2018, was not faulty, correct? That is 100% correct. And you came up here free of charge to tell the jury that. Sorry. I did. Because that was important for you to say. Right? Well, yeah. I mean, not necessarily for our reason, but I was, I volunteered my services. They, they accepted my services, and I wanted to be as helpful as I could. Because, sir, um, this is an XD series, is that right? 
It's an XDM. Okay. And there's uh, something called the XD series, etc. Well, I guess we generically refer to them as XD. The original model was an XD, which is a different model than this gun. There is many XD models. There's an XDM, there's an XDS, there's an XDE. Okay, we'll call it that. Okay. So, so the, the generic term is the XD series, is that right? Yes. And is there an XD? There is a there is an XD. The original version of, of the pistol was an XD. And then there's an XDM, is that right? Correct. And then did you say there's an XDF? There is an XDS, as in Sam. There's an XDE, as in Edward. Is that a new one? I'm sorry. XD, is that one of your new models? It's newer. Okay. Um, in fact, sir, with respect to um, the XDS, um, Springfield uh, had a safety recall for the XDS. Yes, ma'am. Right? This is true. And the reason for the safety call, as indicated on your website, is because the pistols could experience an unintended discharge during the loading process when the slide is released. That is correct. So Springfield voluntarily recalled all the XCSs that they put out in production because there was the possibility of an unintended discharge during the loading process. Correct? This is true. Are you aware of the circumstances surrounding the accidental discharge in this case? Objection. It's for the jury to decide whether this was an accidental discharge. No, there has been no determination that it was an accidental discharge. Clearly, the state saying it's not. Okay, so you uh, reject the question. Are you aware of the circumstances surrounding the accidental discharge in this case? Are you aware of the circumstances surrounding the discharge of the firearm in this case? Not the specifics. So you weren't aware that uh, the handler was loading the firearm when it discharged? No. Now, you're not here to tell us that the ammunition in question was involved, is that correct? Because you didn't. I couldn't make a determination on, on that. All I could make a determination on is the handgun as I inspected it. And you, you had told me that the handgun that you inspected, um, you had used ammunition that was represented to you that was the same ammunition that was used for the discharge, is that correct? Yes. Do you know what ammunition you used? I used a federal 115 grain hollow point. Okay. Uh, by the way, hollow points, you use 115 grain, they're, they're uh, 115 grains, is that right? Yes, that's the weight of the projectiles, 115 grains. <clears throat> And that's a term of art with respect to the measuring? Yes. Grains is the word? Is Brain. Right? Brain, singular? Brains. Uh, oh, okay. There's 7,000 grains in a pound. Okay. It's, a, it's a weight measure. Thank you. And the, I'll show you what's been marked. D23, uh, sorry, 33. Uh, box of independence cartridges. Yeah. You familiar with independence? I am. Okay. Um, independence uh, is a lower quality uh, bullet than a pure federal bullet, correct? I wouldn't say that. It's more of a it's more of an economical cartridge than a federal, but uh, cheaper. Is that they right? are cheaper, yes, cheaper. ma'am. Um, and 
federal is a higher grade ammunition, correct? That's hard to that's hard to say for sure. I mean, there's standards that ammunition has to pass by the by Sandy. Uh, I believe you'll probably see a Sandy indication on here. So there's minimum standards that ammunition has to pass, and I'm fairly certain that that is a Sandy uh, spec cartridge. I know Federal is a member of Sandy. Uh, ammunition is recalled, just like guns are called. You bet. Right? It sure is. Um, did the prosecutor's office? Inform you that independence cartridges. I'm sorry that I didn't hear that. Did the prosecutor's office inform you that it was an independence cartridge that was used? I don't recall that, but I believe they said it was a federal product, maybe, and the cartridge case head is stamped FC for federal cartridge. Okay. Well, in fact, there are many cartridges or bullets for the generic term. Um, that are a combination of different manufacturers, isn't that true? Yes. Um, for example, the uh, independence takes the casing from the spear, the primer from CCI, and the bullet from the metal. Isn't that true? That's possible. And but I will tell you that all three of those manufacturers are owned by the same corporation. Okay. So it's kind of the same family. Um, same family. The XDs are the same family, XDM, same family as XDS. Would you agree with that? So I, don't agree, with, I don't agree with that statement oh. that you just made. The XDS is not the same pistol as the XDM. Agreed. Um, but they do have the safety grip, correct? It does. And it in does. fact, it was the safety grip that you had to um, uh, redesign. It was. But the talk, grip safety. We'll talk about the safety grip, or the grip safety, sorry, in a second. So with respect to the ammunition, you didn't have the uh, independence, correct? Nobody actually Correct, that? correct. I use that. Okay. Um, and you have, as you sit here today, you have no personal knowledge as to the components of uh, the independence. Is that no, right? That is correct. Nobody actually researched that, right? No. At, at the time of your testing, were you uh, made aware that the spent shell casing was found in the chamber at the time of the testing? No. You weren't told that? I see. Now, I a proper op so, no a proper op There's no question that the answer to the question is going to ask you the next question. A proper functioning of a firearm, how it's intended to operate, is that after you pull the trigger, and after the bullet is goes through the um, uh, what do you call it chamber? The chamber, the barrel. Yes, the barrel. Uh, three things are supposed to happen thereafter. The spent shell casing uh, is extracted, it's then ejected, and then a fresh one is loaded. Correct. Okay. And that's how a proper functioning of a firearm. Occurs. Yes, ma'am. Of oh, a semi-auto firearm such as this, yes. <clears throat> um, are, are you familiar with the uh, XD Talk blog? Well, XD Talk. Um, I know what it is. I know what it is. It, it's a blog blog of gun enthusiasts. It's specifically XD gun enthusiasts, right? It is. It is. It's independent of Springfield Armory, but it's an enthusiast's forum. And, and they have a, a forum specially dedicated to accidental discharge. Is that true? I honestly couldn't tell you. It wouldn't surprise me if they did. I don't follow it. Okay. But it wouldn't surprise you if they did. It wouldn't surprise me. Because that's sort of the goal in life to prevent accidental discharge. It is. Right? It's and, the goal. I'm sorry? It is probably the main goal. It is an angle, and it's an angle when you design these things, is that right? Correct. Right. Right. So now let's talk about the design of this particular firearm, the XDM. Do you have it in front of you? I do. <laughs> okay. Um, just going to grab a water on the little side. Let's see if I can get this to focus. Okay. Yeah, it's going to also 
bring up to you. <coughs> So this is S65. This is a, uh, you want to say, this is, this is not a, this, okay. this is an estrangement, right? Let's have a second to handle the Whether or not 
Council Hoover has the Chris Page speech? I am. Okay. Your Honor. Okay. That's the subject of the, uh, of the uh, live analysis. I thought you weren't allowed, you wasn't allowed to look at it, but you could tell us whether it has one or not. Detective Lloyd already told us it does. The, this is an expert witness who's always willing to be willing to sustain the objection as to that last question. How many firearms have Chris Page been in Majority of the firearms manufactured in the United States have grip safety, sir. Mm, I wouldn't say the majority, but a good many grip safeties were probably first installed in the 18, late 1800s. In fact, sir, um, not a lot of guns have grip safety, correct? No, I would disagree with that. Um, Every 1911 pistol, which is one of the most prolific semi autos in the world, has a grip safety. Judge McBeth, um, I'd ask him about the Ruger since he volunteered the 1911. A group, a Ruger doesn't have a group safety, correct? I'll allow the question. You, Your Honor, you may have a sidebar.
So in the XDM, there are two safeties. One is on the grip, and one is on the trigger, correct? Uh, there's also a uh, striker safety. Well, it's inside the gun. Inside the gun. It's, it's passive as well. I mean, you don't have to do it automatically engages when certain circumstances take place within the gun. It gets deactivated when you press in the grip safety and pull the trigger, correct? Right. Okay. So that's half, right? Okay. Now, as far as this passive uh, grip safety, let me back up for a second. When you load a firearm, when you load with the XDM, okay, um, you put a magazine in, and there's not one in the chamber, you can pull the gun to your base and then you have, right? Correct. There has to be a bullet in the chamber, right? Say that one more. There has to be a bullet in the chamber for one to come out the back. Correct. Okay. So um, if I take the magazine out, I load it, I put it in, I try to. I depress the grip safety, I depress the trigger safety, nothing's going to happen if there's nothing in the chamber, right? Correct. Okay. Um, to get a bullet in the chamber, you have to actually pull the slide back and charge the gun. Is that correct? There's two ways to do it. They okay. both, both involve, well, they don't both involve pulling the slide back, but there are two ways to charge the pistol. You, you, One is the way you described and the way I demonstrated. Okay, which includes the movement of, of the slide, right? Okay, so when you move the slide back and it goes forward, a bullet from the magazine finds its natural place inside the chamber, right? Correct. Okay, now, the very unique aspect of the grip safety <clears throat> is that you can pull the slide back unless you depress the grip safety, right? In the XDM. Correct. Okay. So, we have a grip safety. The purpose is uh, to be safe, right? So you don't unintentionally discharge it, especially during the loading process, right? Correct. Yet, yeah. but to actually load the firearm, you have to depress it to pull the slide back, correct? Correct. So you have to remove a safety to load it, right? Correct. And that's a safety feature, right? Passive safety feature in your mind. Correct. Not only do you have to deactivate a safety feature, at least one of them, to load it, but your manual doesn't tell the owner that. Isn't that true? You know, I would have to refer to the manual. I'm happy to show it to you. And you indicated that you. Show me where it doesn't say it. You are. You told us, sir. Okay, this morning. That in addition to your position that you create and offer the manual. Is that right? I do. Oh. 
operator or the owner that they have to depress the grip safety in order to pull the side completely to the rear? Uh, it does not. It does not. So it's fair to say if somebody was following the instructions that you gave them as to how to properly load a firearm, they would have trouble loading it if they're not familiar with it, right? I guess they could, but when you, when you grasp the gun, when you crack the slide, you depress the rear safety. But that, that information but we, don't, is, we don't tell them specifically to do that. That information is missing in this manual, correct? I don't, as know, far as, I don't know that it's required. I see. Well, that, that's fine. That's fine. But it's not fair. It doesn't tell them you have to depress the grip safety to, to slide the... It does not. Okay. Um, and, and not all your... Grip safeties are like that, isn't that true? That's correct. Okay. The XDM, you have to depress or deactivate the grip safety to load it, right? Do you have to do that with any other of your firearm sets? The, X, the XD with no suffix operates the same way. The XDM operates the same way. Uh, the XD in Elite operates the same way. So it's not a uniform functioning of your grip safety, right? Your grip safety Correct. works many different ways. Correct. And for this particular XDM, you have to actually take it off to, to load it, right? You have to activate it or deactivate it, yes. Responsible for the design of the firearm, which includes safety measures, right? Your title is research and development. Right. So I would imagine, sir, since we talk, talked about how the overall goal is to prevent unintentional discharges, <coughs> that you would research why they happen to prevent them, right? I typically know why they happen, but uh, I guess that's a fair statement. You've been doing this for years, right? People um, make mistakes, right? They do. Your job in designing these firearms is to see if, if you can design a firearm that where a person can make the least amount of mistakes, shall we say. That's correct. Okay. And in doing so, um, I would imagine you would study human factors and why people make mistakes and so forth. That would be part of the process. And part of the process includes your understanding as to what's called sympathetic contraction. Is that right? I'm vaguely familiar, not vaguely, I'm somewhat familiar with that. Okay. And a sympathetic contraction is a term coined by law enforcement officers for what also has been called mirror movement or contralateral irrigation. It's when the muscles in one limb are performing an intended forceful action, such as a police officer restraining a suspect with one arm while holding a firearm in the other arm. An involuntary contraction will occur in the muscles and the other limb, that if the officer's finger is on the trigger, it could cause the handgun to unintentionally fire, right? I couldn't testify to that one way or the other. I don't know if that's accurate or if that's a theory or if that's a fact. Depends what sympathetic uh, responses are. One limb there is another. There could be a thousand examples of that. There could be a thousand examples but of that. But I couldn't, I'm not qualified to testify if that's accurate, correct, or... Sure. Nobody wants you to bash police officers in the course of your testimony here today. The point is, sir, you research all of these things to assist in a safe design of your firearm, right? I don't know that that particular subject we, uh, we investigate. But you're familiar, sir, with sympathetic I've heard, response. The, I've heard the term. And that's when you're squeezing with one hand and the other hand squeezes with the other right? I've been asked that too, and he said he didn't. I don't know that that's been the case. Well, let me ask you this, sir. Now, you told us how your XCM operates and works. And I'm holding it. Okay. I'm holding it in my right 
one hand and depressing the grip safety at the same time. Sorry. Move your arm, I can see. And I have to use my left hand, right, to push the slide back, correct? Typically, yes. Okay. And you have to give it some force to do that, right? Correct. And you want to hold the gun in the right hand at the same time to make sure it doesn't fall, right? Correct. Okay. And if your finger happens to be on the trigger and you're pushing with your left hand, it's possible you could accidentally pull the trigger with your right hand as a sympathetic response. Is that true? I, again, the sympathetic response I'm not familiar with as far as the, I guess, you know, a lot of circumstances could happen. If, if you want to say, could that happen? I, I guess it could. But you designed your firearm, sir, to require a person to have to depress the grip safety, take the safety off to load. Isn't that right, sir? If I held my hand over here on your firearm, I wouldn't be able to load it, correct? You wouldn't be able to load it with or without a grip safety if you held the firearm there. And you would agree, sir, in fact, it's in your manual and in the safety courses that you give that Before handling a firearm, you want to make sure that you're not taking many drugs or medication that could affect your reactions, right? right. Or your balance, right? Or your judgment or common sense. Or your judgment or your common sense or your cognitive yeah. functions, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Because the more your cognitive functions are impaired, the more likely you can have an accidental discharge, right? Sure, objection speculating. Just like driving a car, that's total. Just like driving a car. They call them accidents, right? Correct. Right. Have you ever been in one motor vehicle accident? Mm, I have. Did you intend for that to happen? I don't know. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming out. Thank you, Dutch. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. All right. Uh, Mr. 
Mr. Lackley, for whom uh, one is clear if you have any additional questions. What model was the recall for? The recall was for the XDS model. And what's the firearm that we tested in this case? This is an XDM. Was there ever a recall for that gun? Never been a recall on the XDM. And when you test fired this gun or, or did all your tests, was there anything that made you think there should be a recall? No. Regarding a spent shell casing, the defense was asking that would have been left in the inside the gun. Sure. That being it, does that mean the gun didn't work properly? Or fire? Let's just say, does that mean the gun didn't fire? No, that does not mean the gun didn't fire. What could it mean? Judge, I'm going to object. It's beyond his expertise. I simply asked whether or not they shared that fact with him when he was conducting his testing, and it's not anywhere in his report, Judge. That's fine, Your Honor. I'll withdraw the question. Empty shell casing in there, there's no bullet. Does that mean it was fired? Yes. If the slide is all the way back on the gun, will it fire? No. So the slide has to be in firing position. Correct. If the slide is partially back, it won't fire. The slide has to be completely closed before the firearm will discharge. So the example that the fence gave when she... Objection. Leading and probably not even close when, to the example. When showing the gun and talking about the mirror firing and the firearm, the, she had pulled the slide back and had her finger on the trigger. Is it possible for the gun to fire in that position? Impossible. And why? Because <coughs> there's a mechanism referred to as a disconnector. In the pistol, I don't want to call it a safety feature, but it's it's a it ensures that when the slide is rearward, when you pull the trigger, excuse me, Judge, I'm so sorry, that when you pull the trigger, it can't fire because if the slide is back and the gun would fire, that imparts a, a hazardous condition. The gun has to be completely closed and locked. These are referred to as locked breech mechanisms, and it has to be locked. Fire. Would the slide going forward by itself make a firearm discharge? No. And again, in the example pulling back, when you're pulling the slide back and you're depressing the grip seat, would that alone make that firearm go off? No. Thank you, Ron. Sir, what you're telling us under oath. Uh, is that I have the gun in my hand, I'm depressing the grip safety, I pull this back, it doesn't stay in this position, it goes right back, right? There's a spring on it, correct? Correct. You would have to kick a, what do you call it, some type of a lever to keep it in the rear rearward position, right? Correct. So when I take my XDM and I go like this, it goes immediately back, correct? And I'm going like this and it goes immediately back and an accidental discharge can't happen, sir? Is that what you're telling us? I'm not sure I understood the question. Yeah. All uh, I can tell you is if, if the slide is rearward and not forward, it cannot fire. If it's forward, it can fire. If it's forward, it can fire. Correct. And if you're under the influence of, let's say, a muscle relaxer, have you ever had muscle relaxers, sir? Objection, Your Honor. If you're under the influence of some type of uh, prescription medication that interferes Objection, with Your your speculation that interferes with your reactions with respect to mirror uh, or sympathetic responses. That's all I have. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take our morning break at this time to not discuss the substance of your testimony. So, anyone, we're going to take about 15 minutes in preparation for the next witness. Um, and do not discuss anything about part of your testimony. Thank you. All right, let's